was a huge honor and a huge responsibility. Reports coming from the Afghan capital, Kabul, confirm what we've heard from Washington, that the war now has begun against Afghanistan. But it often happens that danger lurks where you least expect it. War is the most inhumane of times. The flights are almost over. What are you going to do now? So what about us? When you spend a long time in one place reporting its story, it becomes part of your own story too. These are dark hours in Afghanistan after the savage attack at Kabul airport yesterday, which killed 90 people. Because in the end, journalism isn't just a job. It's what we do. America's longest war has finally ended here in Afghanistan. As more people arrive on European shores, the continent continues to grapple with migration. Six years since the height of Europe's migrant crisis, they are still coming. We've heard evidence of people who've gotten ashore and been discovered by the Greek authorities, only to be taken back out to sea. See the headlines as they happen with breaking news alerts in the app and get the full story with bbc.com slash news. Follow the story for all the latest with BBC News. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's Global, President Biden urges leaders to pledge to vaccinate 70% of the world's population by next September. The World Health Organization says Africa is being left behind on vaccines. President Biden has promised half a billion doses to poorer countries. We commit to donating, not selling, donating, not selling doses to low and lower income countries and that the donations come with no political strings attached. Meanwhile, in Washington, Emmanuel Macron and Joe Biden agreed to rebuild trust a rapprochement after France was left out of a defence alliance. Also on today's Global. A warning that air pollution is one of the biggest environmental threats to human health will take you through new guidelines just issued aimed at saving millions of lives. And there's growing pressure on India to reduce its coal dependency, but we look at the cost for those dependent on that sector. If we stop the coal production under the pressure of the world community, then how can we maintain our livelihood? And we'll have the latest on the volcanic eruption on the Canary Islands and the warnings about toxic gases and explosions when the lava hits the sea. Hello and welcome to today's Global. President Biden has told a COVID-19 summit that the pandemic is a global tragedy which can't be solved with half measures. He's pledged to work closely with the European Union to vaccinate 70% of the world's population against COVID-19 by this time next year. It is the latest effort to address vaccine inequality where poorer countries have lagged far behind the wealthy. So far, the US has sent just 140 million of the promised 580 million doses to poorer countries. The EU has donated about 20 million doses out of a promised 250 million. The World Health Organization says high income countries have given their citizens 61 times more doses per inhabitant than low income nations. Some of the countries receiving vaccines through the COVAX scheme have yet to vaccinate more than 2% of their populations. The WHO wants countries to fulfil their dose-sharing pledges immediately. Well, speaking in the last couple of hours, President Biden reaffirmed the American commitment to provide more vaccines to poorer countries. 